the history of African Americans in the U.S. is a topic that would require um, hours and hours and years and years and years to talk about. First, you came out and you spoke up for change. And with your voices and your votes, you made it clear that at this moment, in this election, there is something happening in America. The election is crucial from an environmental point of view as well as from a racial point of view. Um, I, what do you find uh, mostly interesting about this year's elections? Well, I never thought I'd see the possibility of an African American being president in my lifetime. Okay. Um, it says a lot about the country that how far we have come um, since I was a child. I can I can remember having to go to colored and white bathrooms. I didn't see it on the TV. I actually had the experience of it. So to see the country move forward to to a point where an African American can actually become this close to being president, to me, is amazing. I just never thought I'd see it in my lifetime. So I am impressed. I'm impressed with the people of the country as well for supporting this man. I think that the elections this year are historic. Um, I, that's, a, that's almost a trivial thing to say, um, but I, I feel like I have to say it anyway. We've never had a African-American or female uh, candidate go as far as in the process as we have had this year. Um, I, I think we're also at a really interesting and crucial moment in the history of this country. Um, so, um, you know, the elections are historic for that reason, too. The election does go to the Democrat. I think we will go through uh, a 200-year event for our country, which would be the election of an African-American as our president. Harold Washington was the first black mayor of Chicago. Um, and his campaign was unbelievable. I mean, you talk about unbridled, uncensored racism. Some audio of a guy calling into a talk radio show when Harold Washington was on the show during his campaign, and the guy asked him, he says, you know, I hear that if you, if you win the White House, I mean, if you win the, the mayor's office, you're going to replace the elevators in City Hall with vines. You watch the, the um, Daily Show. One of my favorite episodes in this campaign season of The Daily Show is Indecision 2008, West Virginia. Get the good people of West Virginia to speak for themselves. I guess because he is another race, I'm sort of scared of the other race because we have so much conflict with them. I think it's fair to say absolutely race will be a factor in the election. It's just unclear how that cuts. Because if you have an incredible turnout from uh, disenfranchised communities, people of color communities, higher than normal, that's a big impact and that's a positive. If on the other hand it brings out kind of some deep-seated racist um, element of our society that still is there and it's bigger than we think it is, that will be very sad. That will be very sad. We know it's there. I mean, it's there. It's just a question is, is it bigger or smaller than, than we think it is? Um, and obviously our aspiration and our hope is that it's a lot smaller than we think it is. Young people don't think it exists that much at all. And I hope they're right. I hope they're right. So this whole group of people, I've been more interested in them. The young, white, Latino, immigrant kids who have grown up consuming blackness. You know, and consuming hip hop, consuming Dave Chappelle, you know, even kids who are from, you know, Podunk, Minnesota, have an engagement with blackness. I think the people in Minnesota are, I guess I don't know about the rest of the world, or excuse me, the rest of the country. Um, and even, in fact, maybe the rest of the world. Uh, um, I think in Minnesota, I think there's a general appreciation for someone's morals 
and um, that that maybe the rest of the world doesn't quite um, quite view the same way. Um, I'm ready for a black president. I think it would be inspirational. I think a lot of things would come out um, that hadn't been cultivated before. And um, but I, I guess I can't speak to how the rest of the U.S. and and the rest of the world will view this kind of monumental um, possibility. If you had asked me that six months ago, I would have told you no, you know. But I think it's possible now. I think unless. Uh, Barack Obama do something very, very stupid, I think he got a real chance at this now, okay? What many people are seeing right now is a generational situation where people of my generation are just having a hard time believing that it's going to happen. They want it to very, very badly. They are, um, and I think every, every day that Senator Obama is more successful and, and things are working, it just, you can just feel it among that generation that's 30 years older, the people in their 50s. You can just feel how they, all of a sudden they're going, oh my gosh, <laughs> oh my gosh. And that is so exciting. Um, you know, it's not a burden for young people. They have no responsibility to deliver that for us. But I'll tell you, you're going to have a lot of happy moms and dads if this generational shift happens. Because it will hark them back to their youth where they will go, oh my gosh. We didn't quite make it, but this generation did. And I think uh, that, that's the thing that's going on with Barack Obama that I think is just so exciting. My father would have said, if they could have been alive to see this, that in my parents' generation, it was beyond their imagination that there would be a person of color or a woman who made it that far in our political system. And you know, to think about it in terms of our ancestors is, um, you, you really puts it in, I think, in some perspective. So you live in really these interesting times, so enjoy it.